It is an undeniable fact that academia and intellectuals play a very important role in the growth and development of that country. Today we have with us Dr. Masood Ashraf Raja. He is Associate Professor at University of North Texas and he has contributed a lot in the field of literature and humanities. Well, my first question to you, Mr. Masood Ashraf Raja, how do you see yourself as Pakistani? Paul, thank you so much for having me here. It's uh, really an honor and a pleasure. And uh, that's a really hard question to answer, but I'll try my best. So, and I'll mix English yeah, and Urdu so good. that we can really replicate our culture here. So, so, first of all, we need to understand whether Pakistani is a very precise, unchangeable concept, right? Most of the times, when we judge someone or we measure it against our own subjective definition of what constitutes being a Pakistani. So before I answer the question, I would like to posit that Pakistani itself is a fluid concept. And depending on who we are, our class, our series, our age, so based on that, the way I see myself as a Pakistani is, is as a Pakistani who is from Pakistan but who works in the United States. So I'm already in a culturally ambivalent, ambivalent space. When I am in America, no one takes me to be an American. I am Dr. Masood Raja who is from Pakistan even though I teach literature. In America, my Pakistani identity gets more fixed because that's my identity. Now, when I come to Pakistan, I have no doubt that I'm Pakistani because I ground my Pakistaniism based on where I am from, right? So I am from Patwar, right? Gujar Khan. It was there long before Pakistan became an idea, and I'm hoping that it will be there until eternity. So basically, I don't need anyone's permission to be a Pakistani, right? I have places where my ancestors are buried. I've visit their graves. So I have a deep connection with Pakistan historically as a part of a group of people who have lived in this part of the world for at least 2,000 years. So that's my integral connection to Pakistan. But that alone doesn't make you Pakistani because there's more that we need, need to prove whether we are Pakistanis or not. And that comes in terms of my work, what is it that I do that in one way or the other enhances Pakistan, right? Makes it become better or makes it look better. That's so right. in that sense, when I'm in America, I'm working on so many projects that are dealing with how to represent Pakistan better, how to produce scholarship about Pakistan. And then when I'm here, I'm interacting with people who are studying, I'm a professor, and then as a Pakistani professor, I try to give as much help as possible. So I think all of these things combined without announcing it is me performing my Pakistani identity. Well, what we have seen that most of the uh, people who like uh, are working in America, they usually leave Pakistan or they get settled or they get nationality and uh, I mean, uh, they, they leave Pakistan for good. But you are a person who, who has been visiting Pakistan frequently and you're trying to contribute as much as possible. Can you please highlight like uh, the contributions that you have so far made? Well, it's a really hard question to answer because part of it suggest that I should praise myself, which I don't like doing, no. But I mean, simply, humbly speaking, uh, a few years ago in 2009, as a scholar, so I thought, what can I do as a scholar? So I started an academic journal. It's called Pakistani Art, the Journal of Pakistan Studies. It's in its sixth year of publication. So in a way, I would say that was a service to Pakistan because it allowed us to create a standard journal, a good journal, which dealt with issues related to Pakistan. It allowed, allowed us a platform to uh, bring works of Pakistani scholars. Literature, literary works or literary works, kind of work? Social sciences research, creative writing, poetry, anything that re represents Pakistan in one way or the other. So that was kind of one intellectual foray into working for Pakistan. Another one is, as a professor in America, right? When I walk into an American classroom, whether I like it or not, Pakistan walks into that classroom, 
Right? So whatever I do, the way I conduct myself, the way I behave with my students, in a way becomes a reflection of what kind of Pakis people Pakistanis produce. So that's my direct contribution in the trenches. If I'm a good person, if I'm a good professor, chances are people who come into my classes would have a better perception of Pakistan, which we absolutely need. And then in the third sense, what I've tried to do is, when I come here, I've tried to make sure that I make as much of myself available as possible. Have Could you tell us something more like about this UNT normal partnership? That's, and that's a what's great question. Of it's, these, uh, so UNT normal partnership, normal is National University of Modern Lang Languages, UNT is University of North Texas. Uh, it's a project funded by Department of State, U.S. Department of State, under an initiative called People to People Relationships. It's a $1 million project, and so I'm the director of that. The whole project is aimed towards sharing knowledge of our English department and normal English department and help train normal faculty and graduate students. So as part of that, I visit every summer and I teach a class and my colleagues come and then also about, I would say, 25 of normal scholars so far have visited our campus. They've stayed there uh, and for about six weeks. They've done their research. So that's the immediate project. But because of that project, what has happened to my career as a scholar is that I have now gained more reach into Pakistani academia. And look, I, I am a retired major from Pakistan Army. So I had no academic friends. I didn't go to a private college. I to Pakistan Military Academy. Se, wo jo ek wala BA hota hai, wo kiya. Uske baad to mare sare fauji the. So normal ki wajah se ye hua ke academia mein humare dostiyan bhi ho gayi, professional relationships bhi ban gaye. Aur uski wajah se uh, it has given me a chance to learn more, but also to contribute more. Do you think like it's gonna impact them a lot? Like I mean, the quality of education is gonna improve with such kind of partnerships, like in future. And how do you see the impact of this partnership on, especially on the faculty um, that has been that has visited or that. Uh, that are planning to visit, you know. Uh, well, I mean, you know, it, it would be very hubristic of me to imagine that it can have a huge impact because normal itself is a wonderful institution. I can bring, bring different kind of knowledge mm -hmm. and different way of doing things. Another thing, because we are dealing with those who teach humanities, right? So people who teach humanities are the ones who, in a way, make the most impact in students' lives. Because they are not just teaching them literature, they are also teaching them skills of communication, both verbal and written. They are teaching them how to interact with texts and how to read complex texts and, and, and draw meanings from them. So I think since these faculty members have visited us, they have observed our classes, they have seen our way of doing that, they themselves are very experienced teachers. So my hope is, and I've also seen it, because I meet so many of them every now and then, that they have incorporated some of the things that we oh, shared great. with them and with their own teaching style. So I think in the long run, if you have 53 faculty members having had this kind of experience, and if they incorporate just a little bit of their experience with us in their teaching mm -hmm. and research, it could be a very transformative thing for the department and for normal. How do you see this uh, like our uh, higher education system? Uh, I mean, as far as the standard is concerned, uh, as far as quality is concerned, and how do you compare it with uh, uh, our education system with the American education mm -hmm. system? I think the differences of scale and of resources. Uh, given the resources which my university has, okay, uh, we are the thirty-fifth largest research university in uh, in the United States. We have 36,000 students. Our annual endowment is more than $350 million, right? So if we have those resources and we accomplish something, well, most of it is because structurally we have those resources. Now, if you give the same resources to normal, normal has the potential in their faculty, in their students, to accomplish all that and maybe go beyond that. So at the end of the day, it's a question of resources, right? Also. I mean, I'm very hopeful that as universities rise in Pakistan, I mean, 20 years ago, 
there wasn't a research culture in Pakistani universities. Now already every university is mandating research, right? So I think combining the, the rising level of resources and faculty commitment and commitment of administrators, I think Pakistani universities will soon become very competitive. The only difference, one thing I think they would have to drastically change is, is the culture of privilege. There is a class system, you know it, I know it, and, and there is a big divide between the administrators and the faculty. Now, if that could be bridged and made more democratic and egalitarian, I think that would further... Before we ask him the next question, let's have a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are talking to Dr. Masood Raja. How do you see that the gap that exists between administration and faculty can be bridged up? Can you see some solutions or ways through which we can minimize or bridge up this uh, gap? Well, I mean, to be frank, this gap is huge in the United States as well. You know, in all universities, most of the times the administrators are more highly paid than faculty and they have more power. Now, the way we uh, cater to make sure that it, it doesn't become a huge imbalance is with different strategies. Now, some universities have faculty that has a full independent faculty uh, union. So they work under a contract which is negotiated every three years. My university doesn't have a union, but we have a faculty senate. And our faculty senate has representatives from all departments, and they are the ones who watch policy. They are the ones who see what the administration is trying to do. And then through the faculty senate, we voice our opinions. So I mean, first few steps here, uh, not necessarily normal, but all Pakistani universities would be, are there mechanisms for faculty to talk to the administration even before something confrontational arises, right? And. Uh, are they actually, are there channels which are always open where faculty can reach to the administration and administration to them to see if there are, there are any differences of opinion? Is there some consultation going on on the part of the administration when they are taking decisions which could impact faculty's lives as well as their work? So that's something that can be done procedurally by making laws within universities and rules. But I think the bigger change that we need is the change in attitudes, how we treat each other. And that needs to be done on a humanistic level. Despite the disparity of power, when I go to dean or the vice president, at the end of the day, they will decide whether they are going to give me what I'm asking for or not. Okay. Like, they will be polite. They will be professional. In my 12, 13 years of dealing with administrators, I've never had an administrator who has even given me a hint that he is trying to patronize me or anything. Now, can we say that about our own institutions? Agar so that needs to be changed. The administrators need to be trained as to how to interact with faculty. So the question then arises, administrators, how many of them have actually had any managerial training? How many of them have been taught how to talk to people who are their faculty and because of them, the university exists. That's so do you idea. think such trainings can really help uh, bridging gaps? Absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, not just such trainings, at least formal trainings where they, someone comes and tells them, look, there are these different managerial styles. Or someone based, informally has a discussion with them and says, you know, this is not police, this is not a, a disciplinary institution, this is an academic education institution. And the norms are different, how you faculty say, administrator, faculty say. There should be some decorum in that. There should be respect for faculty. 
So these are the things that can, on a symbolic level, at least ease out tension and make the working smooth. Okay, we are language to employ उसमें रिस्पेक्ट हो दूसरे के लिए वो तो खैर हर किसी के लिए होनी चाहिए बट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ स्पेसिफिक इंस्टीट्यूशनल सेटिंग एंड देन लॉज टू प्रोटेक्ट दैट राइट सो दैट फैकल्टी नो दैट दे आर प्रोटेक्टेड इफ समवन ट्रांसग्रेसेस एंड सेज समथिंग और डज समथिंग व्हिच इज नॉट नाइस व्हिच इज इलीगल और व्हिच इज रूड सो आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ दीस थिंग्स कंबाइंड एंड आई थिंक मीडिया कैन प्ले अ ह्यूज रोल इन दिस आई मीन मीडिया रिपोर्ट एवरीथिंग but most of the times you never hear what's happening on college campuses unless there is a protest or something i mean some media channels could do a series of faculty and how do they feel now the problem there would be that faculty would be very afraid of you know giving a statement about their own institution in public i don't know how that would be managed but still making it an issue at small level at micro level and then at national level i think is is the way the status quo cannot remain something it's like more cultural uh, factor because it's a, it's, it's a culture where you you find I mean, more violence I mean, it's it's not a culture of cooperation and appreciation and encouragement and uh, equality so don't you think it's like uh, do you think culture or culture is to some extent is responsible for our attitudes toward uh, to, to toward others like How do you comment on I mean, that? I mean, I'm saying that the, I mean, all of our identities are socially constructed, right? So there are certain core things that we might inherit from our parents, but at the end of the day, what I become or what you become is based on so many different interactions. Well, how did your parents treat you? Uh, which school did you go? What kind of people you hang out with? All of these things make us into the kind of people we are. So culture has a role to play in that. now to assume that our culture is that kind of a culture i think would be a big indictment of our i think deep in my heart as i interact with people that our culture uh, by and large is is a culture uh, that encourages respecting others especially teachers right it's the kind of culture which acknowledges that you need to take care of other people ठीक है मोस्ट ऑफ आर विलेजेस और एवरीवेयर एटलीस्ट जो आपके रिश्तेदार हैं उनका तो आप ख्याल रखते हैं ना ठीक है सो देन देयर इज अ सर्टेन ब्रेक डाउन दैट इज हैपनिंग वी आर अडॉप्टिंग मॉडर्न वेज ऑफ लिविंग एंड कंज्यूमिंग एंड थिंकिंग सो बट वी आर अडॉप्टिंग द वर्स्ट काइंड राइट सो वी आर अडॉप्टिंग कि जी हमने मॉल से ब्रांडेड पर्स खरीदना है और हमने ये स्टेटस सिंबल्स जो हैं इज इट लाइक इम्पैक्ट ऑफ मीडिया और समथिंग एल्स ऑफ कोर्स आई मीन मीडिया इज आउट देयर टू सेल यू थिंग्स दे आर क्रिएटिंग डिजायर एंड योर स्कूल सिस्टम प्राइवेट स्कूल सिस्टम इज क्रिएटिंग डिजायर मोस्ट ऑफ योर प्राइवेट स्कूल आर आर प्लेसिंग द डिजायर ऑफ योर यंग पीपल इन दिस एल्स वेयर अब्रॉड राइट यूरोप और अमेरिका सो देयर सेंसिटिविटीज एंड टेस्ट आर नो लॉन्गर वॉट यू कुड कॉल रिलेटेड टू पाकिस्तान दे कैन ओनली बी फुलफिल्ड if they were in england or america or if pakistan becomes like that right so that's a huge problem there Me- media are playing a role in that so i mean i think it would be a combination of acknowledging our ills first and then trying to remedy them and looking at our educational system and seeing how can we tweak that and at the end of the day there is no perfect solution but i think acknowledging the problem is the first step वो हमारी तो हम लोगों की तो ज़्यादातर आदत ये होती है ना कि हम पहले ही नाराज हो जाते हैं कि जी तुम साढ़े चाहे जरा ना बड़े नक्स कट देते हैं एज अ क्रिटिक तो अगर वो उस स्टेज से हम गुजर जाएं एक दफ़ा एक्नॉलेज कर लें कि हमारे में कुछ चीज़ें गलत हैं जो ठीक की जा सकती हैं तो देन आई थिंक ओनली देन कैन वी मूव इन टू द रिमीडियल थिंग्स Uh, coming to the the governance structure in Pakistan, because you have a lot of interest in South Asia, mm-hmm. how do you see uh, the governance structure in Pakistan? Uh, I mean, what problems Pakistani governance system, you know, like being the government, facing? yeah, the government, or mm-hmm. yeah, like, yeah. I mean, how do you see your govern- governance system? Do you do you think it's need, it needs to improve, or what are the areas where you think you know improvement is required? Yeah, I mean, I. But of course our government needs to improve right and the areas in which it needs to improve is first in terms of its transparency we we as people have the right to know uh, how much money is coming in 
who is getting it, how is it being distributed, is it being reported, right? So that we know if someone is appeasing their relative or uncle, it should be out there in the public. Part of that function is that of the media. But even on the larger scale, I think what we have lacked as a nation is this continuity of a system that's accountable to the people. Now, in Pakistan, it's both a sign of siyasatdano ko bura kehna. I mean, siyasat is messy. You have to make compromises. That's how politics works. So it's very easy to point a finger and say, oh, yeah, we corrupt, this is a use So it is not easy. But the idea is that if we do it over 60, 70 years, eventually people, even if they are unlettered and don't go to school, they know their political self-interest. आप अपने गांव में जाएं मैं अपने गांव में जाता हूं आपके जो जिनको हम कहते हैं पढ़े लिखे लोग नहीं हैं उनसे अगर आप पूछें कि उनको क्या-क्या चाहिए और क्या-क्या मिलना चाहिए उनको पता है हम क्या हूं क्या हमें चाहिए एक आजाद मुल्क उनको किसी टेक्स्ट बुक में वो पढ़ने की जरूरत ही नहीं है उनको मेरे आपके या किसी बहुत बड़े सियासतदान को भी ये बताने की जरूरत नहीं है तो इट इट मेक्स मी रियली सैड व्हेन पीपल से समवन हैज सडनली कम आफ्टर 67 इयर्स एंड टॉट पाकिस्तानी पीपल हाउ टू थिंक अबाउट देयर राइट्स it, I think it's a disservice to Pakistani people because we are assuming that it takes one person after 68 years of waiting to come and teach us that our people are not. I mean, you are ready to go to the house, you are Don't you think that when the police are going to come and ask him, they will kill him. I and you have to ask him this. He will know him on a human level. So to, to, to make government responsive, right, so that it knows, it thinks for the lowest of the low, right, and imagine, and that's purely, truly Islamic as well, that what you think is the most important thing in your society, you think is the most important thing, 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 you think is our government is not, no third world government is independent. This economic system that we call neoliberalism is constructed to make sure that the nations that have the potential and wealth can retain it. Right? All of us are playing a game. Our current government is also in that game. Why? Because their hands are tied. Every three months they have to go back to IMF and say that we have a little more money so that the first time you have given us a little more money, we interest to give you interest. So this is an unjust political economic system. We will never catch up. Today, you, me and me and all of us have to start working for 24 hours and be completely honest. There is no corruption. Nahe. We will still not catch up with the developed world because the system is imbalanced. So acknowledging that is the first thing, right? Knowing it. Now what is our fault? We have released the last time when the World Trade Organization has released new rules, nikale, trade liberalization and everything. Our Vizier Khazana was called my name. He went to negotiate. Karne. India ka Vizier Khazana also went to negotiate. Karne. India ke Vizier Khazana has read a document that has put 141 or 145 subjections on it, that will go from this, that will go from this, that will We have 141 observations, right? Now guess how many observations did our uh, finance minister made? This is nothing? Nothing. He didn't have to put it on it. So if these are the situation, तो जाहिर है इसमें कौम की तो गलती नहीं है ना कौम ने जिनको इलेक्ट करके ऊपर भेजा है उनका काम है टू प्रोटेक्ट देयर ओन पीपल बट दे वर्क फॉर द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ ग्लोबल पावर Government more responsive yeah. and more responsible. कैसे किया जाए? Yes. उसमें ये कि मैं आप और हम सब जो हैं active हों politics में. 
اور ہم بجائے یہ کہنے کے کہ جی یہ شیعہ ہے میں سنی ہوں یہ پنجاب کا ہے میں سندھ کا ہم کہیں کہ وہ فرق ہمارے ٹھیک ہیں لیکن جب حکومت سے سوال پوچھنے ہیں تو ہم سب نے کٹھے ہو کے پوچھنے ہیں کیونکہ بات جو ہے وہ ہماری جنریشن کا ہے اور ہمارے بچوں کے فیوچر کا ہے ٹھیک ایک تو یہ ہے کہ وی آل نیڈ ٹو بی پولیٹیکلی ایکٹیو اینڈ آسک کوشچن دوسرا یہ ہے کہ وی مسٹ آسک آر گورنمنٹ ٹو ہولڈ لوکل باڈیز الیکشن کیونکہ اکاؤنٹیبلٹی وہاں سے شروع ہوتی ہے نا آپ کا اگر کام نہیں ہو رہا آپ کے محلے میں تو اٹس ایزیئر فار یو کہ آپ اپنے کاؤنسلر کے پاس جائیں اس کا دروازہ کھٹکائیں اور اس کو کہیں گے یار یہ نالی کیوں نہیں صاف ہوئی ابھی آپ کو وہ کام کرانے کے لیے ایم پی اے کے پاس جانا پڑتا ہے اس کے آگے چار جناب چوکی دار کھڑے ہوئے ہیں رائفلیں اٹھا کے تو وہ کہتے دیے ہیں کہ وہ ان کی پروٹیکشن کے لیے کھڑے ہوئے ہیں لیکن آدھا کام ان کا حق کو باہر رکھنا ہوتا ہے ٹھیک سو سو می ہیو لوکل باڈیز سو دیٹ پیپل فیل امپاورڈ کہ وہ اپنے ریپرزینٹیوز جو ہیں ان کو جا کے مل سکتے ہیں ٹھیک ہے دوسرا لانگ ٹرم جو ہماری تعلیم ہے اس میں خالی سکلز نہ پڑھائیں آپ کو آپ ان کو صرف یہ نہ پڑھائیں کہ یہ بٹن دباؤ گے تو یہ ہو جائے گا پروگرامنگ کرو ان کو ہم سیوک ایجوکیشن دیں ٹھیک ہے ایجوکیشن کس طرح کی سب سے کہ جی آپ کے حقوق کیا ہیں آپ اپنے حقوق کیسے مانگو گے آپ کو اگر پولیس والا روک کے یہ کہتا ہے وہ غلط ہے یا صحیح ہے اگر غلط کرتا ہے تو آپ کہاں جا کے رپورٹ کر سکتے ہو سو دیٹ دے بیکم ایکٹیو سٹیزن رائٹس آئی تھنک دیز آر سم آف دا تھنگس دیٹ آئی کین سی آف دا ٹاپ آف مائی ہیڈ I mean, there is no perfect recipe, you know, politics, running a country, becoming a great nation. It's not a science, right? It's an art. So if, had it been a science, we would have put all the great ones in a beaker, then we would have a very good nation. That's not true. You and I know that. It's grilling, hard work, which requires a lot of patience, but dedication by all. Well, commenting on, uh, uh, like, uh, knowledge of rights and duties is very important for, uh, uh, for the nation. So, can't we introduce uh, uh, rights and duties in, uh, and uh, important basic laws in the form of a book to, uh, in our uh, colleges and universities where at least our graduates, they know what they have to do in their, uh, you know, uh, uh, life and uh, how to protect their or safeguard their uh, uh, rights. So can such a, uh, such, a, such a step of introducing such a book can help people? Absolutely. And I would say go earlier. I mean, we are citizens of a modern democracy, right? Start teaching them civic rights and civic responsibilities from the very first grade. You know, you have four languages in the first Jamaat. Okay? One language is less. اس کی جگہ گو دیم سم سیوک لیسنس تو اب ایلیمنٹری اسکول کے مثلا جاپان میں کیا ہوتا ہے جو آپ کے پری کنڈر گارڈن کڈز ہیں نا چھوٹے چھوٹے ان کو وہ ٹیچرز آ کے بتاتے ہیں آپ نے روڈ کیسے کراس کرنی آئی یوز ٹو واچ دس وین آئی واز ان جاپان ایک چھوٹا سا ایلیمنٹری اسکول تھا اس کے باہر جا کے میں واک کر کے بیٹھتا تھا وہ چھوٹے چھوٹے بچے انہوں نے ہیلمٹیں پہنی ہوئی ہاتھ میں تو وہ زیبرا کراسنگ کے آگے جا کے کھڑے ہو جاتے تھے اب ادھر سے جب ٹریفک آ رہی ہے جو ان لائٹ جو ہے ان کی لائٹ گرین ہونی تو ایچ ون آف دا چلڈرن وڈ ریز دیئر رائٹ ہینڈ اینڈ دے وڈ لک ٹوڈز دا کار اینڈ دے وڈ اسٹارٹ واکنگ سو دیٹس دے لرننگ کہ وین دا رائٹ لائٹ ٹرنس گرین اینڈ دے لک ایٹ دا آن کمنگ ٹریفک اینڈ ریز دیئر رائٹ ہینڈ دے ہیو دا رائٹ آف وے آن دا ادر اینڈ آف دیٹ از دا ڈرائیور اوور دیئر رائٹ ہو آلسو بی نیڈس ٹو بی ٹرین کہ جب When a pedestrian is in the road, right? Don't try to run them over, okay? Stop, because they have the right of way. Now, they might be jaywalking and they can get a ticket for that, but if they are in the zebra crossing, it's their right of way. These are little civic things, right? Now, if we can start teaching that from a very young age, that will happen only when, as a culture, we, we believe in rule of law, right? When our elders follow that. We can't say کہ وہ بیٹے یہ کتاب میں لکھا ہوا ہے لیکن کوئی نہیں چلو کر دیتے ہیں دین ایکسپیکٹ آر چلڈرن ٹو فالو دا رول سو دے ہیو ٹو بی اے کلچر ویئر وی ریسپیکٹ دا لا اینڈ ڈونٹ ٹرائی ٹو فائنڈ ویز اراؤنڈ اٹ ٹھیک ہے نا اور اینڈ دین سیٹ اے پریسیڈنس فار دوز ہو آر ابو اس دوز ہو آر بلو اس دا پرابلم آئی تھنک از وی ہیو لاس فار ایوری تھنگ ان پاکستان دیر از نو ڈرتھ آف لیجسلیشن ایف یو گو اینڈ لک ایٹ دا The statutes that we have on record, there is a law, how will you train the horse, which is written in the law, 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 which is written in the
ठीक है ना द क्वेश्चन इज क्या उसको हम इम्प्लीमेंट कर रहे हैं That's, I think, so, so, the problem. Uh, how do you see the, uh, the role of academia, professors and teachers and uh, mm-hmm. university lecturers in, uh, you know, uh, working on this aspect of, uh, you see, uh, knowledge that, I mean, not even think that the training and uh, grooming that should take place at the campus, right, and that should reflect in our society. So, uh, so uh, how do you see, like, uh, what mm-hmm. kind of role should uh, our professors and teachers play in the grooming and training of our students so that they can become better citizens that i mean they have an important first of all they are role models right so most of the students respect their professors and and try to emulate them so first of all we all who teach in universities know at all levels that what we do becomes sort of something that our students might copy or emulate so our conduct should be impeccable right and it should be good more than that what we do in a classroom is also important now if i want to teach my students a course on democracy but my class is totally undemocratic right it defeats the purpose so ek taraf to main usko padha raha hu aapki ye hukoon hai aapko sawal puchne ki ijazat hai and there is a third reading of a bill and a fourth re- and then every time they ask me a question i tell them to shut up Right? so there is a disconnect between so then the students realize that the class is about learning the text reproducing it on a piece of paper and getting their grade i think we need to go beyond that and need to connect those texts to real life right so literature humanities social sciences need to be taught in a way where we are not just teaching them the text but we are also helping them see through those texts as to what is moral life what is an ethical kind of living what is responsible living and if we connect the two as professors only then abhi aap dekhe na log sawal puchte hain ki kehte the ji taleem aayegi te log acche ho jayenge culture behtar ho jayega te taleem te bahut aa gayi hai par lokan da koi nahi change hoya maqsad ye hai ki hum kaise kis kism ki taleem de rahe hain hum usko computer software bhi padha rahe hain hum usko business bhi padha rahe hain entrepreneurship bhi padha rahe hain पर क्या हम उसको उसके साथ एथिकल ट्रेनिंग दे रहे हैं उसको बता रहे हैं कि इन स्किल्स के साथ साथ आपने जो है यू हैव टू बी अ गुड ह्यूमन बीइंग एज वेल यू हैव टू बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल एंड आई थिंक दैट्स वेयर वी आर लैकिंग एंड वी ह्यूमैनिटीज प्रोफेसर आई थिंक कैन डू अ ग्रेट जॉब ऑफ डूइंग दैट वी आर टॉकिंग टू डॉक्टर राजा बिफोर वी आस्क इन द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन लेट्स है शॉर्ट ब्रेक स्टे विद आस Welcome back. We are talking to Dr. Masood Ashraf Raja. Well, coming to again uh, higher education uh, in Pakistan, do you think uh, sharing of knowledge with other universities, I mean uh, overseas universities, uh, exchange of intellectuals between Pakistan and other countries can help uh, in uh, improving our education system? Yes, I mean the short answer is absolutely because not only can we bring our knowledge and our skills and introduce them elsewhere in the world and and showcase what pakistan has to offer right but also if our professors travel abroad they enrich the university that they either teach at or just go and do a workshop but through their interactions with their global colleagues over there they are obviously going to learn something new their world view would slightly shift and become more complex and then when they come back and teach their own students over here that experience becomes a part of their teaching repertoire so i think absolutely not just there even within the nation i think it's really really best if professors from one university visit another and then vice versa so that we even know what is being practiced at our neighboring universities so absolutely that can have a very positive effect so how do you see the 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 importance of uh, where do you see the importance of like uh, 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 refresher courses for teachers and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, other faculty members uh, professors and do you think such courses can help them become better teachers 
Absolutely. I mean, uh, in United States, for example, most professional degree professors, like people who teach medicine or law or even education, are required to do something that's called continuing education. So every one or two years they go and take a course or workshop that adds to the knowledge that they have. The purpose of that workshop is to kind of bring them on board as to where the scholarship is in their field, what new practices are being developed, right? And what new materials are coming in, which they can find at their own too, but the only difference is that when they take a class, they will also be interacting with other people from their field, so their experience would be richer. And then when they come back, that becomes part of their teaching or research repertoire. Now, if you don't do that, then you know uh, there are professors here, as well as in the United States, who have stopped learning, and they've realized that they've done what they wanted to do. So when they teach their students, obviously they're working with dated materials. And that's, that doesn't do good for their students. It's not just to their students. What, according to you, is the role of uh, education in the development and growth of any country? How do you see it? I mean, increasingly, I mean, look at it this way. The global economy has now become the knowledge economy. Most of the developed nations right now, their biggest industry is knowledge. May it be pharmaceutical knowledge, right, computer knowledge, knowledge of financialization, law, all of the resources, capitalistic resources that are being gener generated, about 75% of it is related to knowledge. And those who have it have the future. Right? So the, there is an absolute necessity for us to not just fill the knowledge gap, but also become competitors in the knowledge field. And how would we do that if we have an agricultural university? We should be the ones saying, we have developed this new strain of cotton, this new strain of seed, instead of Monsanto coming here and selling us their seed. Similarly, in humanities, we should be the one thinking the new theories of reading a text or the new theories of uh, teaching in a way that makes people into better human beings. So absolutely, education has a material role that it produces resources of this global economy. But beyond that, education that makes us into aware and critically aware citizens of a country is absolutely necessary to have a nation which is tolerant, which is diverse, which works towards peace, and which is not so easy to manipulate. So absolutely, in all these facets of life, education plays a huge role, and it's extremely important. That's right. So we're reaching towards uh, like the end of the program. Any last message that you want to uh, give to our teachers, our professors, this nation, through our program? Well, I mean, the, the only simple, I mean, I'm a very small, humble professor, right? I don't have, profound, as Fanon once said, you know, I don't come with profound messages. The idea is uh, we who teach at universities are privileged people. We are lucky that we have been given this chance to share our knowledge with so many young people who come to universities, some of them in very harsh conditions. Their parents are probably doing three jobs to send them to college, right? So we owe it to our students in every single classroom which we walk in that we should give them our best. And our students then owe it to their parents or whosoever is supporting them that, yeah, go have fun. College is partially for that. But at the end of the day, remember that you are there to learn. And the more you interact with your professors and your colleagues in academic settings, you will learn more. Because, I mean, I am 50 years old. I have lived more than half of my life. My students who are 20, 22 are the ones who have the future. My job is to give them my best to prepare them for the future, but it's their job to make sure that they secure it, right? They, they, they keep that future and make the world a better place. So I think it's this kind of a synchronic dance between the older generation that has something to share and the younger generation that must take it and build something out of it that can create a better national and global future. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Raja, for giving us time. As I earlier stated in the program that there are very few people 
who come back and contribute and share their knowledge and share their potential uh, in the development and growth of Pakistan. And Dr. Raja is one of them. This is the first program on education that we have had with uh, Dr. Raja. We'll have a series of programs on different topics with Dr. Masood Ashraf Raja. Thank you very much for being with us. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Raja, for giving us time. Well, thank you so much for having me here. It's been a pleasure.